Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Productivity Lovers Podcast. That would be us. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Productivity Lovers Podcast, the podcast about how to become more productive in your work and home environment. The Productivity Lovers Podcast is brought to you by Chris Scrott, a certified professional organizer and deadly, a digital productivity coach. Buckle up and enjoy the show. Hi, Deb. How are you? Hello, Chris. I am well. I am well. I am looking forward to chatting with you today. How are you? I'm good. We, uh, we got a hamster. Her name is... <gasps> Oh, I love it! Yep, yes. just joined us a few days ago, so we're um, we're trying to okay. figure it out. But she is she is adorable. Oh, I love it! I love it. We were just talking about hamsters. Are you? Yes, one of the kiddos in my life said we should get a hamster and name it. Get this, Hammy. Hammy, <laughs> I like that. I did say we should have some <laughs> like some, um, you know, celebrity name. And then we kind of tossed a few things around, but Penelope, Penelope was the most like name we could come up with. So I love it. I, love it. I hope to see Penelope one day on the podcast. Maybe. I know I, uh, she might, uh, she yeah, her make an appearance. I had no idea how much they hoard. Oh, you know? do they? She has really? this like house and okay. she is like hoarding all of her food and all of her bedding like she barely can get in there it's like you know <laughs> last night I checked in on her she's like on her belly her face like this and her little paws sticking Aww. up it was like so like sleeping I was like oh that's so cute adorable so you're checking in on hamsters I love it <laughs> it, was, it was my night <laughs> I love it I love it so well Welcome to the family, Penelope. Yes, welcome. Today we shall meet. Very How nice. Very nice. Was anything new going on with you? Yes, actually. Um, besides the pretty much completion of renovating. Um, yeah, at least the kitchen. <laughs> at least the kitchen. We've sort of started tackling some smaller projects, but that's, you know. That's, yeah, that was, a, that's, that was a big undertaking. It was, it was. But beyond that, my parents made a move uh, and they have moved in with me. Congratulations. So, That's a thank big you. Thing. Thank you. And that, and it was a good move. This was not because something was wrong mm -hmm. or anything like that. It was, you know, they spent a lot of time here anyway, right? They would come and spend, you know, three months four months and then go back for a month or two and then come back again. We're like, you might as well just move here. <laughs> You're here. Um, so we finally convinced them after years and years and years of asking, we're like, okay, they just made a very spontaneous decision and said, all right, we're ready. Do it. We're doing it. So I was off on a jet plane and I went to go help them finish packing up. Mm. And then we all jumped back on a plane and came home together. That's so exciting. It you're, is, it is, and I, and I love that it's not because something is bad, it's just because we want to be together, so. I, I think, you know, uh, I was thinking you're officially a sandwich generation, congratulations. Grazie, thank you. Yep, and I think that I love that they were able to make that decision for themselves, right? A yes. lot of the times when I work with clients, they are forced into downsizing or moving yes. or make giving up their home or independence yes. and I love that your parents were able to make decisions for themselves they were able yeah. to sort through their stuff they were yeah. able to uh, have time with you to talk about what was important to them or wasn't and yeah. that sounds like a really uh, lovely collaborative experience for all of you it's not because I wasn't pushing them though <laughs> yeah, well you know I mean for years I was like so when when yeah when? When mom Open listens door. to the podcast, there is always a, there's always a little bit of influence from the loved ones. <laughs> yeah, but, but you're right. I mean, it really was their decision. Um, they knew that we were open to it and wanting it. So yeah. they just had to, I mean, it was probably like five years in the making. They took their time. Mm -hmm. yeah, took <laughs> this, time. Yeah, this wasn't a rushed sort of decision. Um, when it happened, it was like, yeah, I think we're ready right now. We're like, oh, 
so that part felt you know rather quick um but the irony of all of this is that you know before she came to visit or before they came to visit the last time they had sort of i guess it might have been like in the back of their heads and they didn't even realize it they were just mm -hmm. letting go of things mm. and they didn't realize it was in preparation for this massive move mm -hmm. and then even some friends of theirs said hey we were wondering why you were getting rid of all your plants and she was like oh i was just yeah i guess i didn't think about that that was pretty much her response so yeah so yeah but anyway it was we're and happy. your fabulous kitchen probably had to influence. <laughs> it sure did because uh, my husband and my mother are the chefs of this home. Um, that kitchen really was not for me. That kitchen was for my husband and my mother. I wanted something else. Although I fully accept this kitchen and I love it now, um, very much so. But yes, there will be some cooking happening here. Um, she's already cooked like a million times. So I am not complaining, not complaining. In, in the, the grand scheme of life, cooking is not my first choice of task. So <laughs> I cheer the cooks of the world. Yay. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, we digressed. What are we talking about? A little about? bit. <laughs> Just a smidge. <laughs> I think that's okay. Catching yeah. up is good. So um, are we talking about Bored and Brilliant? We are. And we both have our books with our little flags. Yes. Yeah. It's like book club day. Yeah. Book club day. Bored and Brilliant by Manoush Zamrati, um, who I happen to follow on Twitter. You do. Um, yeah. Yes. I, and who happens to have a podcast called Note to Self. I think she still has that podcast. Yep. She still has um, the podcast. It was, I, it was live. I just checked it. Okay, there you go. I tweeted her recently about this particular book. It's about a section in the book that we will probably talk about later. Yeah, but yeah, I am yeah. excited to finally dive in to this book. Well, Manoush, if you listen to our podcast and you want to come back and talk about the book some more, we would love to. Please, Manoush, yes. come join us. Shameless uh, plug here for ourselves. <laughs> So uh, this book is called Bored and Brilliant, How Spacing Out Can Unlock Your Most Productive and Creative Self. Yes. So do you want to start us off with like how she starts the book? Yeah. You know, it's interesting how she starts this book. She, she takes us, you know, down memory lane a little bit back to when she had her kiddo. I think it maybe was her first child mm -hmm. who happened to be a colicky baby. And so she would need to put him in the stroller. And, you know, the only thing that really helped him was being in that stroller and sort of walking up and down <laughs> the streets, trying to just chill and calm and, and colicky. It's colic is not a fun thing. So I can understand why babies don't like it. Right. And so at first, you know, she was grappling with this fact that she really couldn't do much during that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You can't work. You can't make those phone calls. You, you know, you have to really be in tune with this new baby, new child. Um, and trying to help them feel better. And then over time, she started discovering that she was noticing things that perhaps she hadn't noticed before. And she was building a new and amazing relationship with her child, mm -hmm. which yeah, that was beautiful. is an amazing thing, mm -hmm. right? And so when you think about what she would have wanted to do, sort of the the productive person in her wanted to make those calls, do the thing, you know, cross the stuff off the list. And then this child is new and then new with colic. And she's got to switch from that into, you know, sort of being attentive and tuning into him. But it took, it took a little, it was a transition, yeah. right? And so that feeling of, uh, you know, all I get to do is, is stroll through the streets of New York. I think it's New York, maybe Brooklyn. Um, you know, that, that, I guess that feeling of boredom and not being able to do anything else. And then that blossoming into mm -hmm. this, this relationship building. Yes. Uh, so I love the way the book starts, um, because it also lets us into this author's life. She's not saying she's perfect. She's not saying she's got this down and she has no vices and she's just great at this. She, like you and I, just want to be aware mm -hmm. right, and raise awareness around our connectivity and our relationship to our devices and whether or not we kind of might want to rethink them. Yeah, I totally yeah. loved that. Um, 
you know, when I read this book, I was like, oh man, I wish we read it before our, you yeah. know, our no phone Sunday challenge yeah. because it felt really validating all of the things she was saying. It was the same thing that you and I have experienced. Um, maybe we should write our own book. <laughs> Uh, let's add it, just, it to the list. <laughs> yeah, we're totally adding that to the list. But it felt really validating that it was like this awareness of yeah. like looking outside and noticing things. And I feel like I often do that. You know, sometimes I'll do something multiple times, and I I have been to like client my clients' homes multiple times, and yeah. then one day I'll be like, oh, I never noticed a tree outside, <laughs> and it's like the tree has been here because when I park, I'm like texting, I'm like trying to wrap up, I'm like in the car, yes. I'm like. I'm not like looking around, enjoying the no. trees, chilling out before I go into their space. That's because so, your car has become mm-hmm. an extension of your work, yeah. your workspace, right? An extension of my home. <laughs> well, there you go. That too. <laughs> yeah. Too. yeah. I, I loved that. I love that she spent a lot of time in this book talking about this awareness Mm -hmm. Uh, And the, you know, the very first thing that the book starts off with is with her bored and brilliant seven step program challenge, uh, which uh, I thought it was kind of cool. So what what were your thoughts on her, um, on her date, on on her challenge? Because you have done quite a few challenges. You are the challenge queen. I have. I love challenges. I I think it gives us a way to try and test new theories and ideas and to learn a little bit about ourselves or maybe a lot. So I love the challenge because it really was sort of centered around building better habits with your, your devices, better mobile habits, um, and how we can use boredom as sort of a launch pad, not just for creativity, but for productivity, because Mm -hmm. certainly if you're, if your head is always, you know, down and in your phone, or if you're always reaching for it and not attending to your priority tasks, I dare say that you're not going to get too much done. Right. So it can really pull you away and be a source of distraction, which is the irony of all of this, because I believe that our phones and our devices are great tools of productivity, Mm -hmm. but I'm very much aware that they can on a dime flip and then become the thing that distracts us. So I love that. I think she also in the book uh, talked about how like technology is not the problem, right? Right. Is our internal fears or boredom like we internally are dealing with something which then we're seeking technology to fill that space so you know i don't want technology is not the bad guy technology is not the bad guy people you may be the bad guy yeah (laughs) i already (laughs) talked about my addiction to my phone so it's like i have no (laughs) i am not living in like rosy paddle land here I don't have a problem. I, mean, I, I totally admit I have a problem with it. I think we all do though. I think we all have our moments and some of them bigger than others. And I'm going to talk about one of my moments. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk too. about the challenge. Should we talk about the challenge first? You want yeah. To so about? let's jump into that. So I love that it was only seven, seven days or seven yeah. steps. Right. So, you know, in theory, simple, <laughs> um, not too long, easy to accomplish, but these were seven things that you could do to really sort of let your mind wonder Mm -hmm. right? and how, you know, we, you know, there is a section in here that talks about what is boredom and what is brilliance. And, you know, you might think of boredom in a negative way. It sort of has a negative connotation. And this book really strives to show that boredom can be a really good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Daydreaming perhaps is maybe what we want to call it back in the day. I guess we used to call it daydreaming. Um, but it's not a bad thing. It's not something that's intended to be eradicated or stamped out. So yeah, boredom. Uh, so on page 29, she says Bo- yes. boredom is necessary. Boredom is a state of mind. Boredom yes. is productive. Yes. Boredom is a wake up call. Uh, and brilliance is humble. Yes. Brilliance is subversive. Brilliance is predictable. Brilliance is slow. Yes. Brilliance it's, it's, is sometimes very mundane which goes back to boredom (laughs) it does like we think I think we have uh you know and the kids do this all the time they like they're like they look at me and they're like I'm bored and I'm like okay boredom is like oh and I did tell one of them the other day well I read in one of the books that we've been reading that 
boredom is lack of curiosity. So I said that yeah. to one of them and she was like, I'm bored. And I was like, you know, what boredom means. And she was like, no. And I was like, lack of curiosity. What do you want to be curious about? Oh, that, but that's a great way to sort of reframe yeah. it. Right. I love that. I love that. Um, well, I'm going to just quickly run down the, the challenge. challenges. Yeah. Yeah. So challenge number one, observe yourself. So isn't this kind of what we do with our clients too? We, we kind of get to like a baseline yep. and we figure out kind of where are we starting, right? So well, it's like, it's like figuring out what the problem is. Yeah. Becoming aware. Becoming How much aware. time are you really spending on technology? And I know when we did our no phone uh, Sundays, people yep. were like, well, my phone is not my problem. This is like, you have to think globally about all yep. of the things that you The tablet, the, yeah. the laptop, all of it, right? Yeah. Observe uh, yourself. Challenge to keep your devices out of reach when you are in motion. So when you are in your car, when you're on the metro or the subway, when you're walking, mm -hmm. taking that green break, that would be kind of hard for me. And you know yeah. why? <laughs> A little tricky because I listen to my books when I walk. Um, challenge number three, a photo free day, no pictures of the kiddos or the rock that looks like it's a bird or the thing you think the cloud is supposed to be. I am <laughs> not, the, you know. I'm not a photo fanatic, but mm -hmm. I did look before I got on this call with you. I do have like 27,000 photos. <laughs> Are they all residing on your phone? <laughs> no, they're residing in the cloud. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. 27,000 is, I mean, okay. I'm surprised, I'm surprised you're not appalled, but yeah, there, you know, there's still 27,000 photos. That's a lot. I am probably not appalled because I'm likely to have a really high number of photos. I think when you have a project, something you're passionate about, kiddos, pets, all of the above, you know, you are likely over time especially in the digital age when it's easier to take photos. You don't have to remember we used to go and take the film to like a, a, a some kind of store and they would that was crazy. develop it for us. And we then you had to wait days for it to come back and we can actually see the photo. <laughs> so so it's easier for us to take photos. It is. It's easier, easier for us to have duplicates or photos that look maybe just slightly different but are pretty much the same. So I guess that's why I'm not appalled because I'm likely to be guilty of that as well. Yeah. Okay. So I'll be the baseline. If, if you're listening to this podcast and you want to tweet us or Facebook us or Instagram us, how many pictures you have on your. Yes. Uh, I'd love to know that. Your device. That would be awesome. I want to know <laughs> See who has the most. <laughs> I know. Right. I, you know, I think when I work with clients, they always, uh, one thing people always ask is like, am I the worst? You know, like everybody yeah, wants to know. I know they always think they are. They yeah. fit in the scale by like, you know, yeah. I explained the bell curve to one of the girls the other day because <laughs> she was just talking about running and I was, she was like, I'm always over here. I was like, you're the, you know, you're at that one end of the bell curve. Yeah. Little kids on the other end. And then the majority of the kids are in the middle. So, yep. I want to know where I am on the bell curve of photos. Huh. <laughs> All right. See if you can top 27,000 photos, people. Oh, I'm sure they can. I don't, well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. All right. Challenge number four, delete that app. Not just any app, not the app that you're not using, not the app that you downloaded, but thought you would use the app that you absolutely cannot live without the one that you love. Yeah. Love. For me, it's my email. I just, I don't think I could do this. I, I don't think I could do that either. I, this one would be hard. This, she, <laughs> I like what she says. She says, take the app you can't live without and trash it. Don't worry, you'll live. <laughs> I know, right? You'll be Don't worry. You'll live. <laughs> you'll live. All right, challenge number five. Take a vacation. Take some time off. Put the phone away. No phone like, Sunday. We did that. I like her terminology, vacation. Vacation, vacation. right? Vacation. Yeah. Challenge number six, observe something else. Reclaim the act of noticing what's going on around you. See things that perhaps you wouldn't see because your head is like stuck to yeah. your screen. And then challenge seven, take everything you've learned. So from one through six, and then use it as this launching pad to set some goals for how you will now from this point on 
interact with your devices and how you'll be more mindful and let your mind wander. Yeah, I thought her challenge was like really manageable. Realistic. You know? Like before, besides like the one deleting app day. Yeah. Which I could probably delete the app for one day. I just don't think I could live without it because I pretty much work from my phone all the time. So yes. that wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, it probably would not. So I think with, as with any challenge, you have to sort of think it through a little bit and make sure it's going to fit with your lifestyle, your current lifestyle. Yes, you're attempting to maybe become more aware or make some kind of a change. Mm -hmm. But if, you know, if you know you talk to a client, you know, every Tuesday at 10 a.m., that's probably not the time to put your phone away, <laughs> right? So it sounds really obvious, but I'm just saying, you know, it's just so think it through, obviously. Yeah. I think I have like come to believe, you know, as I get older, I feel like I get wiser. Like everything like with moderation so. is okay, you know? Yeah. We need technology. Moderation is fine. Yeah. Um, I loved it in the book she talked about Camp Long Acre in rural Pennsylvania and how they had decided to let kids bring their technology to camp because yep. their philosophy was basically that at some point we have to teach children how to use technology in a way that's balanced, right? And, yes. and that in, in uh, when you're making choices about technology, uh, you're giving up on other things. And that's important to know because that's real life, you know, that's real it is. life. It but is. Our challenge was that it reiterated that over and over again, right? The moment you're, you know, you're stuck on your phone, you may be missing out on your baby, or you may not be paying attention to the gargoyles yes. on the buildings in New York, or you may not. That's be, right. That's you may, right. You may not be paying attention to like, you know, it's fall and like all of the leaves. Oh, I noticed that the other day. I was just, driving down the street and I was like, oh my gosh. How amazing is this street? Yeah. I drive down that street every day, but this one morning I noticed. Yeah. And how many more of those moments could we have? And how many amazing ideas could you get if you just let your brain stop being busy all the time? Mm -hmm. Because that's what our devices do. They keep our, they keep our brain engaged and obviously to some degree happy because we keep scrolling, moving, swiping left, right, up, down. We're taking pictures. We're always doing something with it on no, no phone Sunday. I was reaching for it, even though it wasn't in my pocket. I thought so I felt a phantom a vibration, phantom vibration, yeah. phantom vibration. Yeah. She did talk about a couple of things that uh, were also very substantiating of like the research substantiates that mm -hmm. our brain. Uh, and I think on page like 41, she talks about yeah. um, the experts think that all of this stuff is impacting our working memory and the ability to process information, technology and social media can impair those areas, which can either look very much like ADHD or exacerbate underlying attention problems that people may already have. So, yeah. you know, I think that it's something to be aware of that, you it know, is. I have uh, my girlfriend, Robin always says, especially since the pandemic, she's like, I feel like everybody's experiencing ADHD the way I have experienced my uh, whole life. Okay. You know, just yeah. because of the way we're living and the way we're doing and all this technology yeah. and whatnot. And the truth is that the, the research substantiates that, which is scary. It's alarming that our brains yeah. are behaving like we have ADD and we don't have, uh, you know, our working memory is completely yeah. uh, gone. Uh, I yeah. mean, when was the last time that you, somebody said something to you like, uh, what is the name of that, you know, I don't know, drummer for this band. And like, yes. you actually remember the name. Everybody goes like, oh, we don't oh, know. Let's Google it, it, right? We, we just don't even it. take the time to force our brain to remind yeah, ourselves. Right. We just give up right away and then just go to the technology to help yeah. us. Um, you know, one of my cousins, he's like Wikipedia. He's like a human <laughs> Wikipedia. <right? laughs> and it's like, you know, kids are not going to be like that anymore. Like there's a yeah. lot of fun facts that some kids are maybe never going to learn because they can go to technology to find out what exactly. Or maybe they'll learn it, but they won't retain it. That is true. Right? Yeah. So they'll, 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 they'll figure it out. They'll go to a Wikipedia or some wiki page online. Um, I remember having 
Encyclopedia Britannica, like the actual set of books. <laughs> I can't mm. remember that yeah. that was what I used. So, and these days it is Wikipedia or something else online. So I, I get that. I think it's that immediacy of being able to do that, that is getting our brain sort of rewired. Um, I guess that might be the word to use mm -hmm. where we're you know, when we get an email, we expect the person who we expect the person that we send the email to to respond pretty quickly because, mm -hmm. hey, it's not in the mail. It's not stamped. You got mm -hmm. it. You should answer right away. Yeah, if somebody doesn't respond in five minutes, you're like, what's wrong with them? What's I'm going to you, you got it. Yeah, my email. Exactly. Or or text message. So you're in the middle of deep work. You're online. You're writing your blog post. You're writing a proposal. You're doing whatever. And the text message comes through and you stop doing that to answer the text message. And then it takes a while for you to now get back to where you were before. Yeah. And then you get another one. And so the book actually mentions that we are shifting between tasks every 45 seconds. How do you that's get anything really, I mean, done? That's a really big deal, right? That's huge. Like we're shifting tasks every 45 seconds, which makes it extremely difficult to be productive. If because you're working it, online, it, yes. It takes... Um, I don't know. I, I'm in a venture to say that it takes you like another three to five minutes to reshift back to what you were doing to begin with. It takes just before longer, you get actually. Back it, again. it takes about 23 minutes when you are task switching. So from one task A, you switch to B and to go back to A to really get focused and back to where you were. It's about 23 minutes. Yeah. And if you are checking your phone, checking your email, checking your tablet for whatever it is, the latest YouTube video every 45 seconds. How do you do anything? You don't. With purpose, how do you do anything of consequence? So yes, this is about awareness. Um, I love that the book throws in a lot of these stats. There's a lot of neuroscience in the book, a lot of mm -hmm. cognitive yeah. behavior psychology. There's a lot of stuff in this book. So it's more than just this challenge, but mm -hmm. It really was eye-opening, that particular shifting every 45 seconds. Um, this was for folks who were working online. So if they're at their computer right now, get a notification and they're off yeah. 45 seconds. That's just crazy to me. That's a lot. It is. It is very much so. Um, I was also shocked. <laughs> uh -huh. I was shocked by this study that she talked about in the book as well about people who just didn't want to be bored. They were put in a room and said, you can sit or you can shock yourself, basically. So they did. <laughs> they did. That was crazy. Like the statistics was like something like 67% of men said that uh, took the shock uh -huh. and like under 50% of women took the shock. Yeah. Uh, instead of being bored, I was like, wow, that's a lot. Well, it, oh, it means that we're, so we're, we're really wanting to engage our brain. We don't want to sit with the discomfort that it might present in the beginning. Yeah. And, and to, to wait for what might be at the other end of that, because mm -hmm. sometimes you get your most creative idea. Maybe you come up with a solution for the, the problem you've been having for years, but you don't allow your brain the opportunity to like, think about that and to get down that road. So we try to fill it by shocking ourselves. No, we don't. But in that experiment, they did. They just couldn't handle it. Yeah, I'm sorry. My statistics were wrong. Uh, one third okay. of the men and a quarter of the women were so unnerved by the boredom that they prefer to take the available distraction, which meant they shock themselves. Yeah, nope. I know. I mean, I would like to think I wouldn't do that. One participant shocked himself 190 times. That's, oh, that I'm guy was sorry. pretty bored. You know what? I'm not trying to judge. Okay. No, I wasn't in the room. Yeah. I wasn't in the room. I don't know what it felt like. It could have been the most boring room, you know, like plain paint on the wall, a desk and a chair and you sat or maybe just a chair and it could have been really difficult. And maybe you're having a hard day. It could be in so many things, but I would like to think I wouldn't shock myself. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I think. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. So. I have to be in the experiment to actually decide. I don't think I'm going to try that experiment. So yeah, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Um, I think one other really interesting thing, once again, that this substantiates something we already been talking about is like the business of addiction and how, yes. how technology is now designed to make um, 
make people be addicted to the, you know, to the reminders, to the notifications, to the thing itself. Uh, she spent a lot of time talking about games. And I yes. have to say that is not a problem I have. I have That's zero not. games on my phone. Oh, zero? I Seriously? I have Woody, which is like Tetris, Woody? but it's oh, like, it's like a Tetris game. I have that too. Uh-huh. I have that and the kids probably play on it more than I do. Um, okay. But I do, I hardly ever play. It's not, that is not my go-to, okay. you know, distraction. I play games all the time. Yeah. What's your favorite game? Okay. So this is, you know, earlier I talked about reaching out to Manoush on Twitter. Yeah. Because she and I both play this game called Two Dots. Two Dots, And yeah. it's literally, you're just connecting some dots of the same color. It's really nothing fancy. It is not, there's no like fanciness about it at all, really. It's no bells and whistles. It's just simple. The color dots and they move. There's a little, there's gamification. It's a game. So you're going to get rewarded with colors and things like that. But, you know, there's no real money happening here. I don't pay to get, you know, further along. I just like playing the game. I, I love connecting the dots. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love connecting the dots. Maybe that's, you know foretelling <laughs> of some kind, but it's, it's a way for my brain. And you know what? I feel like I'm saying what she said in the book. It was just a way for my brain to just do something fun. Mm. And then I just got sucked into it. I really got sucked into it. Well, um, it became a problem for her, right? Cause she was like missing her train stops. She was like yeah. lying to her husband saying she was going to be working when she was really playing video games. <laughs> okay. It was, that was like, it became a problem for her where she's like, I have to like, you know, I really have to do something serious about this because it's become yeah. disruptive. Um, and so and she deleted it. She deleted it. it. Took a lot of work, but she deleted it. So yeah, is it. that a problem for you? Or is it, she also talked about another person and I can't remember, she had written a book about something uh -huh. um, that she used it as a way to unwind at the end of the day for yeah. five minutes every day. And she'd been playing it for like five years. So it was you know, it was just her way of like meditation to quiet down her brain yep. so she could go to sleep. I use it as my reward. Mm, yeah. So I, before I play the game, I need to practice my Spanish first. Nice. So I tie it that way. And, and ideally I need to be walking. So How is your Spanish be, coming along? My Spanish is coming along quite well. Thank you so much. So I, for asking that is, I have gone over a year of daily practice of some kind with my Spanish. And I am someone who responds really well to streaks. When I build up a streak mm -hmm. that to me is substantial, you know, like 30 days of doing something. If I get to day 30, I am likely to get to day 60. And okay. if I get to 60, it just, I keep building on it. And so which is why on No Phone Sunday, I had to find a workaround <laughs> to practice my Spanish. So while I don't find that this game is detrimental to my day-to-day -day life, there are times when I'd prefer to play the game than to say, talk to a live human being. Yeah. Because okay. I don't want to engage in conversation because it takes longer and then I have to really listen, <laughs> right? There's no point in conversing if you're not going to listen. And so, so from that standpoint, yeah, sometimes I don't want to talk. I just want to play this silly game. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, I, I think, I think I have a way of making it not get more control over what it already has in my life. Yeah. Um, and I use it as my after Spanish treat, so to speak. So that's, that's how good. I handle it. Yeah. Uh, so so I, I think it. my, um, my takeaway from this book is, um, and it's, you know, boredom leads to brilliance. Got that. Yeah. And I think awareness about all of the ways that we're getting distracted or what we're using to distract ourselves. And then I started thinking, of course I was driving uh, home listening to it, but yeah. I often drive home without any sound. Like I don't listen to the radio. Yeah. I don't listen to any music. Sometimes people call me, but not always. So it is a time for me for like an hour where I so just focused. let my brain calm down. Yep. And I often do have like random thoughts about the world and life and things yeah. like that. So I was thinking when I finished reading this book that I was like, I most days have at least one hour 
that I allow my you brain calm to yourself. Be. Okay. You know, cause I do feel like I, um, my life is filled with things and people and sure. needs and I'm curious. It's yes. like, there's always something going on. I'm not, I'm often not laying on the couch, just like, you know, doing laying on the couch. <laughs> yeah. That's just not my yeah. personality. <laughs> but I was like, wait, do I have enough time in my life that allows me to think mm. without any distraction? And the answer was like, yes, I do. So okay. I was like, Very okay, nice. I'm doing okay. That was my uh, validation for myself. I like that. I like that. Um, and I love that it's a regular practice, not one that perhaps you may have thought about, but that has become sort of part of your routine. And there's a lot of benefit to just having that non-busy time, not engaging your brain in something. Yeah. Um, I'm trying more of that. I often use the car as my extension of work. Mm-hmm. So I will finish up the phone call or even it's, it might be something related to my house. I may have to call to ask a question about something I purchased or something like that. So I, I have been trying to use my car ride back home, especially after dropping off at school to just be quiet and to actually look around. And that was when I noticed the trees on that one street that I drive all the time on. (laughs) Um, So I, but I still don't think I have enough of that. Mm -hmm. And it's a, you know, it's obviously a full house here. So I feel like I need to build in more of that. I'd like to kind of get to where you are, where you, you have that sacred time just for, just for you. Mm, Yeah. And, and your brain to just kind of (laughs) decompress. Yeah. So, uh, so I love to know if you're listening, uh, if you have some quiet time already built in your, in your life that you feel like it's a quiet time for you to just be bored and brilliant and wonder and. Um, I wonder, I wonder if that has an impact on your productivity. Yeah. I would love to hear from people just maybe even just take one, one of the days of her challenge and see how things work for you on that day. Yeah. Um, And then tell us tag Manoush and tag us. Yes, absolutely. Um, And try thinking of boredom as a positive thing versus something that's a bad thing. What good things can come out of it? Chris mentioned, well, you mentioned curiosity and sort of honing that curiosity muscle and using that boredom time to to do that. So yeah, yeah, tell us how it works. Oftentimes boredom leads to something brilliant. So I hope that that happens for you. Well, um, I don't have anything else to share about this. Do you? I do not. I'm checking my notes. Let me, let me check. Let me check. No, I think, I think we've got it. Just start thinking about how you're interacting with those devices and give Manoush's uh, seven day challenge a try and then come back and tell us. Yes. Tell us all about it. Well, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Productivity Lovers Podcast. We'll see you in our next episode. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Productivity Lovers Podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to subscribe so that you get notified when we upload a new productivity podcast. For more tips and notes from the show, check us out at productivitylovers.com. Talk to you soon.